And here we have the final resting place of Burt Reynolds. Famous actor. He was in awesome movies like the Smokey and the Bandit movies, The Cannonball Run, Sharky's Machine, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, Stroker Ace. I mean, the list goes on and on. Heat. <laughs> I loved the Smokey and the Bandit movies when I was a child. And I still do to this day. But this is his stone. For a while there, he just had a simple marker. And then recently, they just put this uh, stone with a bust of him here. He was born on 2-11-1936, died 9-6-2018. There's pictures here of him at the base. What was your favorite Burt Reynolds movie? It's kind of a tie. Smoking the Bandit or, or the Cannonball Run. I love the Cannonball Run as well. And it says he played football at both Palm Beach High School and Florida State University before an injury cut his football career short. Well, I knew about the football stuff for sure. I always heard about he was a football player as well. That's a beautiful stone. I found one right here. Jonathan Harris. On November 6th, 1914 to November 3rd, 2002. He was on one of my favorite shows. He was on Lost in Space as Dr. Zachary Smith. I love that show. Even though it was a little bit before my time. He was the son of Russian immigrants. He grew up in Brooklyn. He received a pharmacology degree from Fordham University, but after seeing several local plays, he decided he wanted to pursue acting instead. To correct his Brooklyn accent, he watched hundreds of English movies, changed his name, and then joined the Mill Pond Playhouse in Long Island. His Broadway Boy debut was in 1942's Heart of the City. During World War II, he toured with the USO in the Pacific Theater. Upon his return, he landed a co-starring role in the 1957-60 series, The Third Man. Other TV roles, which including guest spots on The Outlaws, Bonanza, and a regular part in The Bill Dana Show. In 1965, he was cast in his most famous role, Dr. Zachary Smith, in the pilot for Lost in Space. It says that TV Guide proclaimed him the best supporting actor of 1966. With the unexpected cancellation of Lost in Space, Harris found himself fighting typecasting, he found guest roles in Night Gallery, Bewitched, Ghost, and Mrs. Muir, Sanford and Son, Get Smart. By 1982, he all but retired from screen performances and devoted himself to voiceover work. His voice was heard in numerous commercials and cartoons, including Darkwing Duck, Freakazoid, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, Toy Story 2, and Hubert's Brain. He also provided the voice for the fabulous, smarmy, Lucifer on the original Balazar Galactica. Wow. Harris reprised his role of Dr. Smith in the one-hour TV special Lost in Space Forever. In 1998, his last major role was in A Bug's Life. Harris died at an Encino Medical Center from a blood clot that reached his heart after he was hospitalized for an unrelated illness. He was attended by his wife of 64 years. Funeral services were held on what would have been his 88th birthday. We got Johnny Ramone of the Ramones. Is born John Cummings, legendary guitar player. Born October 8th, 8, 1948, died September 15th, 2004. If a man can tell if he's been successful in his life by having great friends, then I have been very successful. Johnny Ramone. statue of him on top. Very awesome statue. And then on the sides of this, it has um, messages from people. He was a great American and the greatest friend. I love you, Eddie Vedder. A dedicated punk and a loyal friend. Thanks for everything. I miss you, Johnny. Rob Zombie. 
Eddie Vedder and Rob Zombie. That's something to put on his stone. You're my partner. You're the coolest. I love you so much. Forever and always love Linda, Ramon. And the bottom there, it's kind of hard to see. Forever here today, never gone tomorrow. My eternal friend, I love you. Lisa Marie Presley. Wow. See if there's anything on the other side. And here is the grave of Walter Matthau. God, you guys have known him, the odd couple um, with Jack Lemon and countless other shows as well and movies. He was initially a character performer, but he rose to the leading man status in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, he played a wide variety of roles, from villains to gruff but lovable characters. He co-starred with Jack Lemmon in several pictures and became associated with playwright Neil Simon's works. And he uh, was a gunner aboard a bomber with the United States Air Forces during World War II. And it says he enrolled at the Dramatic Workshop of the New School for Social Research in New York City and studied under legendary theater director Erwin Piscator. He had a wide range of just roles. You know, he uh, was in The Odd Couple in 1998. Um, you know, he uh, was in Grumpier Old Men. I think that's my favorite role of him. It was in Grumpier Old Men, definitely. I love that movie. It was hilarious, I thought. And um, it says he is here at, at uh, Westwood Memorial Park, not far from his longtime co-star and friend, Jack Lemmon. So we'll maybe try to find Jack Lemmon at some point. In here, there's some areas that are kind of gated off, and it says no tourists. So um, maybe some of these guys can be, you know, inside those, some of those private areas too. But Walter Matthau is right here on the main road as you drive by. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, February 28th, 1906 to June 20th, 1947. And it says, in loving memory from the family. I wonder what family they're talking about. His family or the family, if you know what I mean. But um, they've got like stuff here. You got a penny. Yep. Of course, chips, that's very fitting dice and somebody put oh look at that that's another item that's very Child fitting actress over here heather o'rourke she was in the poltergeist movies one two and three and she was the one that got the iconic saying they're here into everyone's psyche And then in the Poltergeist sequels, that iconic saying, they're back. She was actually discovered in 1980 by director Steven Spielberg while eating lunch with her mother at the MGM studio commissary. And Spielberg was looking for a six-year-old girl to play the part of Carol Ann in Poltergeist and hired her after her interview and screen test very quickly. Among her many movie and TV accomplishments, the thing in her life she was proudest of was being elected student body president of her fifth grade class in 1985. And her one goal in life was to go to UCLA and major in filmmaking and to become a film director. That was one of her ultimate goals. Some of her television credits include Fantasy Island, Webster, Chips, Happy Days, and the new Leave it to Beaver. And when she was in school, she never turned down a classmate for an autograph. And she also was known to have an amazing memory, often showing up to movie and TV sets, having all of her lines memorized already. And on February 1st, 1988, at about, I think she was roughly 12 years, 12 years old, 
She died following two cardiac arrests, her cause of death later being ruled as congenital stenosis of the intestine complicated by septic shock. That's sad. I remember her on Happy Days as well. I don't remember her in any of the other TV shows like Chips and Webster, but I for sure remember her on Happy Days. Brought most of us a lot of joy and entertainment to our lives. Walt Disney. They have him down as a motion picture pioneer, film producer, animator, theme park mogul, voice actor, most remembered for creating Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and a host of other cartoon characters. He was awarded a total of 32 Oscars, more than any other person for his achievements in films. Wow. Definitely uh, one of the greats. I'm exploring this side of And here is the final resting place of Helen Chandler. She was best known playing the role of Mina in the 1931 movie Dracula with Bella Lugosi. Now recently she was just put into the mausoleum here. Um, I do believe she was locked away in a vault somewhere after she was cremated. Uh, for years and years I guess her remains were unclaimed. And it was Arthur Dark from the channel Hollywood Graveyard that started a fundraiser and got her a spot here in the Cathedral Mausoleum. So hats off to Arthur Dark for that. Sad story. I can't you know, believe there was no family around to place her somewhere, but that's how it went down from what I understand. So thank you to Arthur for doing that. And I know Arthur was, was getting somebody else put in there too, Edmund Gwynn, which he did recently as well. And there's a picture of her and Bella Lugosi in there. <laughs>